What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the tutorial action. Today we're going to be tackling the, the fiercest of them all, the Norse. I want to say before we get into this that with the Norse build order, because of Oxcart shenanigans, there is always going to be a way to get your builds slightly more efficient. So I want to say we're going to ignore those for this build order, but make sure you're aware of the fact that if you can skip an ox cart or delay an ox cart because you share gold and wood or you share food and wood, you should. But we're not going to be showing that in this one. We're going to be going over all of the just regular spawns where it's not possible to be doing any of that shenanigans. So first things first, we're going to come over to our hunt. We're going to click great hunt on our hunt because that's what we want to do. And we're going to scatter around. So the beautiful thing about Odin is there is no uh, food spawn less than 800 food. Uh, may, well, there could be a 600 food spawn on uh on what do you call it on alfheim so we might have to take a look at that spawn and uh and see what we can we can get there so uh we'll go for the max food spawn here 900 food in your base i mean it's obviously more than that if you want if you have a different thing you can um find that as well uh, and we're going to be just doing a very very standard build it's going to look incredibly similar to uh to the the greek one actually in all honesty you put three villages on uh, on food, you put two villages on wood. Uh, you can actually get yourself an ox card here and get yourself two villages on wood with the idea of throwing a house down a little bit later and that's going to be uh, basically allowing you to get all of the wood income you need to afford your house on time and everything else and you should be able to get a temple out and be really, really happy with your classical age. So... Uh, with a lot of different builds, uh, you should be... F oh, yeah, these guys all have to shoot the same guy here. We'll get another dwarf here if we can. And we can. There we go. Dwarf comes out. And so perfectly there. Uh, uh, with all Norse builds, it really, really doesn't matter what way you get your villages out. So long as, in the end, you finish with seven on food four dwarves and four villagers on wood so this is just a way to do this there's plenty of other ways that you can uh you can do this here i'm going to be getting myself the temple now uh and we we'll move forward with this build so the temple is going to get chucked down nice and early here we're going to start getting some more dwarves out onto this so we got five we can have six if we can afford a dwarf here we should get the dwarf here right so we'll get the dwarf make sure we follow the wood around and shoot that there as well get ourselves our dwarf if we can afford the second dwarf that's all the better we can get our last villager onto onto food after this, or we can even advance if things are are good enough. Okay, there's our last dwarf, and these villagers can come over here. We can actually move these villagers off of wood over onto sorry off of gold over onto wood. Start scouting with our ravens and look to advance here. Now, there, as you could see, that there was an opportunity to advance right then and there at three minutes and ten seconds ish, but. It doesn't really matter with Norse. You don't really need to advance super fast with Norse. Even in the Norse Wars, even though a lot of people think it's necessary, as long as you're getting something like a, a sub 4.30 advance time, completely fine because you can actually build these Hursa and by the time your opponent's attacking you, you're normally fine. Normally fine now. There are some exceptions to this, but that's the general build. You drop two houses. You get yourself long houses straight away. You build Hursa here, ready to start the game. So that is the... Uh, the first kind of build you might want to attempt here with Odin. Now, what happens if things are a little bit more difficult? So we're going to go and take a look at the 400 food build and we'll take a look at uh, how things look there. Because if you're on like a 600 food map, you're still going to have enough food to great hunt that. Going to be fine for a 500 food map. Going to be fine to great hunt that hunt. I would recommend doing that. Maybe even bringing some goats over if you are on that 500 food. One thing to remember, you have 750 food in this great hunt. So two giraffe plus two very low food pigs should be enough to make yourself two giraffes plus two extra pigs. So you can get some extra value out of that there. We didn't do that in this game. But anyways, moving on to the next one. All right. So we found ourselves on this map here with one, uh, with two zebra over here. So we're going to actually... Actually eat a chicken first and the reason for this is i want to bring my herdables over here to uh 
to be shared with this great hunt. I think that's really important. So we're just going to come over here, take the long route, finish up on that chicken, come back over here, eat ourselves the, uh, the zebra, and then we're going to come back over. We're going to go for a big scout here. So that's, oops, we need to get hunting dogs. That is a mistake. Definitely get hunting dogs as soon as you can. I don't think it's going to matter all too much if you do forget it, like me. You will be known as the one who forgot their... Uh, they're, who forgot their, their hunting dogs, right? Again, this game, I'm also going to be getting myself that extra ox cart out. You could 100% share this ox cart with this tree line over here, and I would recommend doing that if you are, if you are feeling, feeling that way inclined. Um, the other thing to note here is there is another build order which you might want to go for, which involves getting yourself a second Ulfsark out. Now, maybe on the two zebra spawn, it just might not be worth it to do it, but I'll leave that up to you. All right, I also want to make sure this dwarf comes out, so I'm going to garrison the villagers there. A little bit of force dropping. Might be a little bit technical. You can build a uh, gatherer there instead of a dwarf and just get that dwarf a little bit later, but I do like the, uh, the early dwarfs a little bit earlier. Makes me feel a little bit more safe and cozy at home. So, we found ourselves this hunt over here. Now, technically, you should be fine to finish up this hunt and then walk over here. I'm just, I'm going to play it by, uh, a little bit by ear here. And I'm, what I'm going to do instead is make sure that if you didn't find that hunt, you're still going to be fine. So, once you get yourself 80 wood over here, you can move over onto this chicken, build the temple... And continue along here, building villages out onto this location over here, finishing up on these zebra. We've got this one goat over here that you can eat. We're going to be getting ourselves this dwarf here as well. Let's make sure we can get it. So we'll just come back over here. We also want to be getting ourselves uh, another dwarf here if we can afford it. And it looks like we should be okay to do that. Let's do a quick drop. And off we go. There's our dwarves. And get one more villager here. And do we have enough food to advance? Answer is most likely yes. So I'm going to drop these villagers back. back here. Finish up on that location there. We'll just pop off here. Come over here. And up we go. So, I mean, we still have food left, so we might not have even had to take off the chickens there but that's just an idea if things are looking a little bit funky for you in the early game and then you're in that position with uh that villager was supposed to come over onto food and you're in that position where you can build your hearse right now you can get your houses right now everything is hunky dory as we say over in australia i don't know if anyone says that anywhere else but that's the point there we still get ourselves that seven villages still going for that 420 ish advanced time on this map i'm going to restart this exact spawn and i'm going to show you building a ulf sock at the start and show you exactly what the differences are when you do that all right we're going to be showing you the one where we get an ulf sock relatively soon here in this game so we're going to get that ulf sock basically right away here uh and we're also going to be getting ourselves the ox cart. Oh, these are supposed to come over here. And we're going to be great hunting this like that. And we're going to be moving over here. And we're going to see how things go now. So if on this way, this off site comes this way, this off site comes this way. And we're just going to scout around the map, try and clean up as many goats as you possibly can. This is a kind of more meta build order for Oasis. And I would recommend this one if you have a little bit more hunt. But... We'll see what the problems are with this build if uh, if things go relatively wrong here for us. So again, I would be sharing this tree here normally. Uh, I cannot afford to uh, I cannot afford to get my ox cart out early on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to long distance chop on that tree over there for the time being, and allow that to be completely fine uh, as we are scouting we're going to drop our house get ourselves the dwarf get ourselves another villager over here i would have liked to have gotten a, a dwarf out earlier but it was not possible i'm going to send this villager actually over onto the gold here one thing you're going to notice here is this this gold is actually going to be really really important we're going to move back home after we've done all that nice scouting there after we've secured all of these things uh, keep chucking villages over onto gold as we need more dwarves here. It's probably actually enough now. We can start getting our dwarves out. 
They're sending an Ulfsark back home to build our temple as this other Ulfsark continues to scout around the enemy base. Getting as many of these things as you possibly can. We found some more goats, that's nice. Let us drop ourselves that temple now. Continue to send these back home. Temple goes up. Villager comes over here. Get ourselves an extra villager. We've got three villagers over here, two villagers over here. So we, just be, oh, we don't want to lose this. Uh, I think we are going to lose this, though. Get ourselves another dwarf. Get ourselves that ox cart. I do need another dwarf here, so I want to grab that as soon as I can. Actually, I probably should just grab the ox cart now, just because. And we can take this villager off here. Come over here. How many dwarves do we have? Come home. We need one more. These villagers can come off here. Come over here. And it seems to me, even on... Even on a map with this little hunt, we still get the food to advance off of 400 food. Boom! There's no reason not to do this build. This build is king. This is the one. Allows you to get your dwarves out as that dwarf's coming in. Nine seconds behind the other build because you spent the nine seconds on this Ulfsar kid to scout around and get all of these goats. And you're gonna have a really, really fun time moving yeah. forward. Come over onto this hunt, live the dream, two elf sarks, all the goats have been grabbed, and you win the game because you are playing as Odin. So that's the kind of low hunt. Now, I guess the next step is going to be what happens when you have no hunt in your line of sight. It's effectively this build order, right? By the time you just jump onto chickens and you, as soon as you find the hunt, you move over to it. I don't feel like I need to show that because it's basically this anyways. So I don't feel like you're going to have any problems with that with Norse. Norse is the luckiest of the civilizations because of that ox cart. I think the thing to remember here is three villages on food, two villages on gold, two villages on wood, and then you go. The next part is the hard part, the water maps. That's when things get tricky. So we're going to jump into Mediterranean right away. Alrighty, so we're on Mediterranean now. This is the build. First things first, one villager here coming to wood. So we've got three on wood. Then we're going to get ourselves dwarves and an ox cart. If the wood line is shared here, you should share the wood line. So make the effort to walk over there and chop that down, share the gold line with the wood line with this ox cart. If not, you have to build the ox cart, no worries. Uh, it's gonna be maybe one in 10 Mediterranean games that you can actually share that uh, as the ox cart's gonna come out. We great hunt the pigs because we want to eat as many pigs as we can here. So great hunt them nice and early. I think you only need four pigs in total anyways, but so any Mediterranean map, the lowest pig count is two with Odin, so you should be fine. Then we drop the house straight away. We got ourselves two fishing ship, four villages on wood as they move over here. You can notice that we left 50 food here. That's because I want to get another dwarf out as soon as I have the resources for it. So this village is going to come over onto the pigs now. We're going to be looking to get ourselves this next uh, this next dock. We get a nice early dock up. And there's a lot of reasons for this early dock coming up at this point. But the main one is that Norse's economy is absolutely gigantic in the early stages. You advance a little bit late uh, and you can't be spending it, your resources as fast as possible. So there are builds in which you can... Oh, you're supposed to come over here. There are builds in which you can advance a little bit faster, but I feel like they're all super, super risky. As that dwarf comes out. And we are going to be looking for five dwarves and then the temple. That's something to remember. Five dwarves, then the temple. The other thing to remember is five fishing ships, which is nice and easy uh, to remember that. you got five dwarves, you got five fishing ships. Can't forget the number because that's all you're going to have. All right, so we finish up that. Stop training the fishing ships for a little bit. We get one more dwarf out. That's going to be our fifth. We got our last fishing ship coming out. We're going to be dropping ourselves the house now. These villagers can move over here. Start chopping down this tree. Out the way. Try to be as efficient as possible. Uh, move over onto that spot over there. So no more extra dwarf. It might feel like you should build a dwarf here, but do not. Otherwise, you will not get the temple up in time. This temple needs to be coming down uh, well, well, well before this uh, before this three-minute mark. Otherwise, it won't get up. Now, you can get yourself another dwarf here if you can afford it. I will be able to afford it. So I'm going to build one more villager, I think. One more gather and then build a dwarf. Yep, that'll do. 
One more, and then we're going to get our fishing ships out again. We are looking to get ourselves a total of nine. Nine fishing ship would be really, really nice. So the temple will be up in time. We are going to be looking for about a 3.34 advance time, give or take. Uh, as this dwarf is getting built, what we do is we look at it and we go, okay, at 70%, garrison, 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 and then town belt, and up we go. We're going to be moving everyone over onto that location over there. Onto the wood. We're going to be throwing up this, uh, throwing up this dock as soon as we possibly can. Getting that final fishing ship out, so we can probably cancel that fishing ship in an attempt to get the dock up as fast as possible, and maybe throw the extra fishing ship out now. That's fine as well, because the other thing you're going to need is to get this house down as quick as possible here as well. As these villagers over there enjoying their life, get the house down. You see, we have a lot of gold in the bank. That's why we put those dwarves over onto onto wood here. As Freya is going to come through, get ourselves a hand axe, and we're going to be ready to spam out these uh, these longboats straight away. Now, one thing is going to happen here is 4:30, around about this time, is when your opponent is hitting the next age. Greek players who hit a 4.30 can only be training from two docks. Remember that. You've got three docks. So you're going to have one extra ship coming out by the time they're attacking you. So don't attack them. Let them come to you. That's my first... That's my advice there. Uh, as we're going to start making the units, we make ourselves these longboats. The dock comes up. House comes down. Longboats take 14 seconds to train. So this house will be late. But if you do it a little bit better than I did, you'll have a lot better of a game as these dwarves over here. Uh, can start making their way over to this gold and you will have your your boats popping out here relatively quickly here have to keep building your houses and all that other good stuff uh, but that's that's generally the builder we went a little bit over here normally it's a four minute series but i feel like this needs to be kind of uh, addressed here that that's that's the aim of this build this is why you're getting the three docks you can see every single dock at this point is building yes you're gonna have a little bit of idle time in a dock but it doesn't matter it's not like you'd be able to afford to produce any more than this anyways off of nine fishing ships and you're just trying to play defensive and hold here because you when the, the point at which you win mediterranean with norse is when you have a large amount of boats when the micro stops mattering and that extra one damage from your boats starts piling up so say you have 100 population, chances are on water, like 30 or 25 to 30 longboats. Your opponent has 25 to 30 trireme. Chances are the longboats are going to win that fight. So keep that in mind when you're playing Mediterranean. We'll move on to Anatolia now. Show you that one. It is very, very tight build here with Odin. We'll show you it and get into it very, very soon. All righty. Anatolia time, ladies and gentlemen. Anatolia time here. Exactly the same start on Anatolia. However, we do have ourselves a, uh, a shared location over here. But I'm going to say, well, yes, Anatolia, you're going to have more of a chance of having a shared location, but I'm going to show you that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. We're still going to be going for this. We're still going to be great hunting this hunt here. Uh, I know you want, you normally want hunt, but I'm great hunting the goats, uh, and that's to help me in the early game here. Get this dock up here as fast as possible. Move on to this gold mine now. I'm going to move off of this wood line before that tree finishes. We're going to drop our house kind of straight away, get ourselves the fishing ship out, and we're going to start roaming all the way over to the other side of the map. Again, we're going to be leaving ourselves that little dwarf there out of the out of the uh, town center here. We'll see 50 wood, sorry, 50 food remaining here because we want to get an extra dwarf out. So we're putting a lot of villages onto wood this time. So they go up to six villages on wood. I believe it's six. I think it's six. I think it's six. We'll go up to six. Uh, so then we're going to go over onto the food. We're going to move our old stuff all the way over to the other side of the map, spamming out fishing ships here. We need to run as fast as we can to get this dock up. As fast as we possibly can to get this dock up. So we're getting ourselves that six villager on wood. And then we're going to get ourselves a dwarf here. You can see that dwarf comes out perfectly for us. We're going to jump onto... It only feels like we jump onto gold here. And then we start going onto food. That could be wrong. As we might need a little bit of uh, garrisoning here from these fishing ships. Get ourselves that villager. Drop the dock down. This fishing ship starts to work up here. Get ourselves this. You should be working over here. Now we start going onto the onto the uh, 
onto the, the herdables here. So this old Sark is going to want to build us another house over here. Get ourselves another villager out on this location. Keep throwing these fishing ships out over here. We're going to need to get ourselves an old Sark as well here. At some point, I think maybe now would be a good a uh, good time to get it if I can afford the old Sark. Start getting this. Let me build my temple straight away here. House was a bit late. Temple comes down. I think that might be a little bit early, but temple comes down. Another villager coming out. No worries. We're gonna have to throw another house down here, so we'll throw that house down. I feel like there's a lot of different ways to sort this out here. Uh, we need to get that final fishing ship out of this location as well when we can afford it. Doesn't really matter just yet because it's kind of an inefficient spot. Better to get them on the top there. One more dwarf seems nice. I'm gonna drop another dock up the top here as kind of soon as we can. Uh, so we are ready to go. We're going to be able to advance here right after that that dwarf is finished. So we're going to be dropping our fishing ships back for a very fast advance time here. Up we go. Sending this old sock over this side to drop the dock there. Down here. Continue to build fishing ships out on this top side. We are a little bit slow on the top side, but no worries. We're going to be getting all of that wood out that we need here. Drop the dock, drop the other dock. Remember, most people are going to be advancing at 5.15 here. It would be normal. Ooh, where are you guys going? So we drop the dock down over here, continue to get our fishing ships out. It's a little bit slow, I would say. Maybe you should put a couple more villages onto wood, but uh, that's effectively a way through here for, for this map to get both of these things up. And we just need the one more fishing ship on this side anyways. Immediately, you want to be thinking about getting yourself per scene here. As the dock comes down, one more fishing ship will come out. We've got lots of resources in the bank here. Dock over here, dock over there. All the docks are up. All your fishing ships are out. You've got lots of wood income to come through here. Uh, and you can spam out all of, the, uh, all of your longboats right now and try and play as defensive as you possibly can uh you do have to drop houses and all the other good stuff here but effectively you should be okay from this position to, to just play the game out i think your strategy is at this point are either to kind of all in on land or go for a semi-fast heroic defending your water from your opponent attacking it as best as you can and all the other good stuff that happens here. I think there is a world where maybe going for a seventh villager on wood here would actually uh, net you these things out a little bit quicker, but we didn't do that. So you test it out and you can decide. Uh, I don't care enough. I think that this is completely fine. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, please consider hitting the follow on the YouTubes, or the subscribe on the YouTubes, and I'll see you guys in the next one.